Hello viewers, welcome to the next section of this course, Putting Delphi on the Server. In our previous section, we dealt with multi-threaded programming. In this section, we'll see how well Delphi can behave when it runs on the server. We will start off by developing web client JavaScript applications with Web Broker, and then convert a console service application to a Windows service. We will also see how to serialize a dataset and objects to JSON. Then, we will move on to sending a POST HTTP request encoding parameters and implement a RESTful interface using Web Broker. Further, we will control a remote application using UDP and use App Tethering to create a companion app. We will also create DataSnap and Web Broker Apache modules. In the end, we'll see how to use a cross-platform HTTPS client. So, let's get started with the first video of this section, Developing Web Client JavaScript Applications with Web Broker. In this video, we'll see the Web Broker technology available since Delphi 4 and we'll consume it from a JavaScript application. Let's start! Many Delphi developers think that if you need to develop a web solution, you have to look for something different to Delphi. So, they give up years of Delphi knowledge and start to create a web solution with another technology. Although there are cases where Delphi is not the best choice, in most scenarios, Delphi can behave even better than many of the web-only technologies available today. What you need is a good framework to work with. This video uses two external open-source projects, which are Delphi MVC Framework. IT is a powerful Delphi framework to develop RESTful web services. This is its project website. It is written by Danielle Tetti and a lot of good contributors from all over the world. JTable, a jQuery plugin to create Ajax-based create, retrieve, update, and delete CRUD tables. It is written by Halil Ibrahim Kalkan. This is the project website. We'll start by downloading these libraries and putting each zip file in a folder. Let's say the folder name is Delphi Libs. To download Delphi MVC Framework, go to the project website and clone the repository using a Git client. There are a lot of Git clients. A good general purpose solution is Tortoise Git, a well-integrated Windows shell extension able to access remote and local Git repositories directly from Windows Explorer. The Tortoise Git is downloadable from this link. You can also use the command line version and then use these command lines such as the git clone and the link of the website. I have already created the folders and cloned it, so here it is showing already exist. Type this command, or you can use Delphi to directly download the repository. Navigate to File, open the From Version Control, select Git. Then, in the window that appears, inside this, write the link of the website, and here provide the destination folder, and then click OK. Now, the integrated Git client will clone the repository, downloading all the necessary files. At the end of the process, the wizard asks about which project we want to open. Click Cancel and close the dialog. I've already installed, so I will not do that again. The Delphi MVC Framework files have been downloaded in C drive of Delphi DMVC Framework. Configure the Delphi library path to point there. Being hosted in GitHub Delphi MVC Framework, the latest version of the code is also available as a zip file. You can look for a button labeled Download Zip in the project page. However, the preferred way to get the source code is cloning the Git repo, and I strongly suggest you get confident using Git. Moreover, the zip file doesn't contain the submodule's code. That you have to retrieve by hand from the Internet. The same procedure needs to be done for JTable. Go to the GitHub project page on this link and clone the repository on your machine. As for Delphi MVC Framework, if you want, you can download the zip file instead. Put the JTable code in this file. In the video project, there is a downloaded copy of the sources. However, you can use this procedure if you want to download a fresher version of the sources. 
Now that you know how and where to retrieve the external projects used in this video, let's start with the explanation. Now open the video project phonebookserver.dproj from this video project folder. This is a web broker project. Web broker is a technology available since Delphi 4 to help create web server applications exposing an HTTP forward slash HTTPS interface. More information about web broker can be found at these URLs. Creating Internet Service Application Index and Using Web Broker Index. In this video, we'll see a simple CRUD for an interbase database table. Here's the final application, which we will get in a browser. Take a look at the project folder. When you write web broker applications, the relative position of the static files used by the web application is important, and we have to deliver some static files to our clients. Here, the DCU folder contains all the generated DCUs, while the WWW folder will be our document root for the static files. In the WWW folder, you have an index.html and a lib folder. In the lib folder, there is the folder containing the JTable library. Our application is a web client app. That means what the user sees in their browser is not completely generated by the server and then sent to the client, but the client has an initial HTML and then it will use JavaScript code to request data to the server using Ajax. When the server data is on the client usually transferred as JSON, the JavaScript code assembled data and HTML to generate the final DOM. In this video, we'll use JTable to avoid all the boring HTML writing to create a simple CRUD interface. Let's start from the initial HTML file retrieved by the client. This is the file that starts our application, and the JavaScript inside it will download the actual data to show. If you open it using a normal text editor, better if with syntax highlighting, you will see few files loading into it. It is jQuery library from the Google CDN. The other is jQuery UI library from code.jQuery.com. Next is the jTable from a local copy. This is the jQuery UI CSS for a specific theme from code.jQuery.com. The last is the JTable CSS theme from our local copy. These files are required by our web client app. The JTable library allows you to generate a complete grid with embedded editing functionalities, only providing specific URLs to invoke. We'll provide these URLs in the web broker server. 1. Index.html delivers the main file. 2. Get people returns a JSON array of JSON objects with the database data. 3. Save person can be invoked to create or update a person on the database. If there is an ID field, then the person will be updated. Otherwise, they will be created and a new ID will be provided by the database. 4. Delete person deletes a person with a specific ID. Note that this server is not a RESTful server. All the HTTP resources are invoked using a POST method. We are using plain web broker here, and Delphi MVC framework is used only to easily serialize data retrieved from the database. A real RESTful server will be developed in sending a POST HTTP request encoding parameters in this section. Back to Delphi and the project. Open the web module and show its actions property. You should see something similar to this. Here you can see the web file dispatcher is configured to point to the www folder as its main root folder. In this way, all the files in that folder that have permitted extensions will be visible to the client. FireDAC components are used to access the database. There is a TFDC connection pointing to a local interbase database placed in the data folder to run this project. You have to start the interbase service from the service control panel. For each SQL statement, there is a component dedicated apart from delete, which is executed directly on the connection. At startup, we have to activate the database connection. Here's the TFD connection before connect event handler. We have to inform the internal web server where the static files are located and what the web root is. In our case, the web root folder is located at the same level of the executable and is called www. So, in the web module create event handler, we have to write this code. We will now retrieve the people list. 
The client will issue a request to get people and the server has to respond with a JSON array of JSON objects. This request is handled by the action get people action. The event handler contains this code. This method executes a query on the people table and then serializes the dataset returned using a class helper introduced by the objects mappers.pas unit, part of the DMVC framework. JTable can also handle sorting on the grid columns. To do this, send another request to the server with a parameter named JSorting, containing the field and the direction of the order by in the form. First, underscore name ASC or last underscore name DESC. This is a nice feature. However, we cannot simply concatenate this string to the SQL. We have to sanitize it to avoid a SQL infection attack. So, there's a regular expression to check whether the JSorting parameter contains only allowed characters and is composed of two words. We do not control if the field on which ordinate is a valid field because the select will issue an error in that case. The prepare response method is needed to correctly prepare the response to communicate with JTable. If you want to understand the details, you check the JTable getting started here. Now, let's create or update a person. JTable allows the user to create a new record or modify a record that has already been created. Here's the GUI used in the case of a modify request. This is the edit dialog generated by the web client app. When the data has been filed in, the user can click Save, and then all the data is sent to the server in a post request. This request is handled by the action main save person action invoked with the save person path. Here's the code used to create or update a record. The simple trick used in this code to determine if an insert or an update is requested is to check if a field named ID is present in the post-ed fields. If an ID field is present, then we have to generate an update, otherwise an insert. Deleting a person record is the simplest method. The code of the delete person action is invoked with the delete person path. Here's the code. There is only one thing to note. We didn't use a specific command to issue the SQL statement, but the connection directly. Now, let's run the application. Hit F9. You should see a console window informing you that the server is started. Open the browser and point it to this local host link. You should see the web broker phone book with all the details mentioned in the first image before starting this video. If not, try checking these points. Is port 8080 free? Is the interbase database running correctly? Is the URL written correctly? This is only a small introduction to what you can do with Web Broker and a bounce of good JavaScript libraries. There are a lot of articles about Web Broker. Some of them are a bit old, but most are still applicable to the last version of Delphi Seattle. After reading the current documentation on the Embarcadero doc wiki, have a look at this article. Web Broker can also create an ISAP DLL for Microsoft Internet Information Server and an Apache module DLL for the Apache HTTP web server. If you plan to deploy your web application on a production public server, you should consider putting your application behind a full-fledged web server such as Apache or IIS. Another solution is to use the simple web server created by Delphi and put a reverse proxy in front of it on this link. However, if you'll use the application in your intranet, it is safe enough to publish it as a console application or, better, a Windows service directly on a server in your LAN. Another bit of good news is that Web Broker web modules are really independent from the final program type where they will be linked. So you can develop a console application, debug it, and then convert it into a Windows service, an Apache module, or an ISAPI DLL with a few clicks. If you have trouble retrieving the Delphi MVC framework project code, you can follow Getting Started contained in the developer guide, which you can find at this link. Great! So in this video, we developed web client JavaScript applications with Web Broker on the server.